Hey, welcome home and welcome to Sweeter Than Honey. Great to have you guys here today. It is my honor every week to share with you funny dad jokes every Friday. And I'm excited to share with you three dad jokes from the Bible. And I thought, you know, we're funny at work or funny at home, but we should also be funny at church too. So here are your three Bible dad jokes of the week. First, what kind of a person was Boaz before he got married? He was ruthless because Boaz married Ruth. Second, how does Moses start his morning? Hebrews, a, co- a pot of coffee. Hebrews. Moses is a Hebrew, so Hebrews, a pot of coffee. Get it? And third, did Eve ever have a date with Adam? No, just an apple. I hope you found those funny. So at this time, let us look at our God's words for today, which comes from 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 11 through 29. 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 11 through 29. I'll read it for you, and we'll be reading from the NIV, so please carefully follow along and hear the word of the Lord. So the elders and the nobles who lived in Nabal's city did as Jezebel directed in the letter she had written to them. They proclaimed the fast and seated Naboth in a prominent place among the people. Then two scoundrels came and sat opposite him and brought charges against Naboth before the people, saying, Naboth has cursed both God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. And they sent word to Jezebel, Naboth has been stoned to death. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Get up and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, that he refuses to sell you. He is no longer alive but dead. When Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, he got up and went down to take possession of Naboth's vineyard. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in Naboth's vineyard, where he has gone to take possession of it. Say to him, This is what the Lord says. Have you not murdered a man and seized his property? Then say to him, This is what the Lord says. In the place where dogs licked up Nabal's blood, dogs will lick up your blood. Yes, yours. Ahab said to Elijah, So you have found me, my enemy. I have found you, he answered, because you have sold yourself to the evil in the eyes of the Lord. He says, I am going to bring disaster on you. I will wipe out your descendants and cut off from Ahab every last male in Israel, slave or free. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and son of Basha, son of Ahijah, because you have aroused my anger and have caused Israel to sin. And also concerning Jezebel, the Lord says, dogs will devour Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Dogs will eat those belonging to Ahab who die in the city, and the birds will feed on those who die in the country. There was never anyone like Ahab, who sold himself to the evil in the eyes of the Lord, urged on by Jezebel his wife. He behaved in the vilest manner by going after idols, like the Amorites the Lord drove out before Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes, put on a sackcloth, and passed it. He lay in sackcloth and went around meekly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you noticed how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself, I will not bring this disaster in his day, but I will bring it on his house in the days of his son. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So yesterday we saw that Ahab wanted a vineyard and he wanted to uh, make a vegetable garden out of it. And the, you're not supposed to sell, you know, uh, possessions of land that's been gifted by God. And so he was refused when he wanted to buy it. And so Jezebel, the queen, kind of suggests will falsely accuse Naboth of doing something, of cursing and a blessing against the king and God, and we will stone him to death. So they do. So they create this thing where they um they have they have a fake you know meeting. They have this meeting of fasting meeting, and they put him in a prominent place, and they lie and kind of stone him and take him outside and stone him. And one thing that really um is different about this passage because so far we've seen um we've seen Ahab kind of sin right. He's he sinned on his own, and by him worshiping idols, he's kind of brought upon idol worship on Israel. But this is one of the first times that we see a king kind of forcing people, the people of Israel, to sin on his behalf. Jezebel has these people, the people of Israel, lie against and have false accusations against Naboth and thereby killing him. And so now we have this pr- pr- pronouncement where God's like, well, you're not the only one dying, Ahab. Anyone who's a- acquainted with you, anyone who knows you, anyone like slave or free that is in your group or that is in your kind of line are all going to die. And so basically Ahab 
um, is humbled and he finally, you know, he puts on a sackcloth and he he begs for forgiveness and God mercifully gives it to him. And and the kind of pronouncement is now the judgment will be upon his sons. And something that I want to talk about today through our passage is that, you know, something that comes with coveting other stuff. And what happened, and we'll, and as you know, we're going through the Ten Commandments on Sundays and we'll hear more about what it means to covet, but ultimately desiring what you're um, uh, doing what your neighbors have. And what this kind of, what's, what kind of sin Ahab committed was, he desired things more than God. That's all it is. Remember, Ahab saw Elijah beat the prophets of Baal. Ahab saw God's might, mighty hand in his war and battles and gave him victories. And yet, he still desires something more than God. And I think that's problematic. So church, in your life, in your life, if you have seen the miracles of God, if you have seen the glory of God, if you have seen how God is great to you, and yet you still desire something more than God, then that's problematic. So at the end of the day, all of us should desire God more and more every day. Maybe we might want something else. Maybe we might desire to be something else and, and more than God. But at the end of the day, as Christians, we should desire God and only God. So let's think about it. What has God given me? How much has God shown me? How much has God blessed me? But at the same time, am I desiring something other than God? Am I desiring what my neighbor has? Am I desiring what other people in this world have? And is that right? And it isn't. And let us continue to think that and come back to God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for loving us. Father, we ask for your guidance and your love. Father, we want you to continue to show us um, how to desire you more. Although we might desire the things of the world and we might covet, help us to be faithful in desiring you and only you. We thank you so much. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen.